Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doo. Welcome back to my channel. So today I thought we'd come along and we'd have a bit of a play making some coin envelopes, but slightly different. So with a slightly different spin. We have made coin envelopes before, obviously in mass making sessions and you know, probably various other videos. And this time what I thought we would do is we would make some mix and match kind of um, coin envelopes. I'm so sorry, as I'm watching this, my camera is slipping down. So hold on, hopefully I will adjust it and it will stay up. Right, okay. Fingers crossed it's going to stay up now. Now I've got half my cardigan in. Right, okay. Now when my tea's gone, obviously we're going to have a lot more room on the desk. Uh, so what have I bought along? I have bought along um, a variety of papers. Now minor principles, and again, I say this all the time, minor principles because that's what I tend to have most of these days. Um, and then what I've got here are some offcuts. Now these are offcuts from a mass making session. So these are also principles. These are all printed on thicker paper, so they're not on copy paper. Um, that's just because I personally would, you know, struggle to make anything and not tear it if it's on copy paper. Um, but what I thought we could do is use these and just combine the two pieces, if that makes sense, to get some interesting looks for our coin envelopes. And it's a little bit of a sort of different way to make them. Which, you know, you may find that you actually find simpler than, you know, the standard way or the normal way that we have made them in the past. So, let's take a piece of paper that's actually not going to be too problematic. You know, it's not got a sort of definite, you know, section of picture, if you see what I mean. So, it's all, more all over. So, I'm taking this one. Now, this one is from my large birdhouse um, kit. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to marry it up with, let's have a look. So these have all been coffee dyed or they are double sided. Um, and the reason being is because obviously these are going to be our flaps for our coin envelopes. So you want either double sided or, or coffee dyed unless you don't mind having just white um, paper showing. So let's pick something that we think is going to complement really nicely with this paper so we could have something like that i mean i don't know whether that's kind of a bit too much you know of a uh, stretch i mean weirdly enough i kind of don't mind this stripey i mean you're probably all sat there thinking what on earth that looks hideous but yeah i don't kind of mind it or i don't mind that one so i don't like either of these two with it so um yeah, let's go for one of these. Right. Okay. So, yeah, probably the sheet music or the, maybe the damask. Because, yeah, I think maybe this is a stretch too far and you're possibly all just thinking there's something wrong with her. She has, you know, put a horrible combination together. So, what we are going to do is make our coin envelope. Now, the chances are, unless you want to make a tall one, you don't probably want your paper full height. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my paper down slightly. So I'm going to just see. So if we had it, say, this sort of width, I'm going to cut off a slither down the side. So about here. Okay. Like that. Just because we don't need it to be, you know, full width. And then I'm going to cut off a portion here. So again, you know, up to you sort of which way around you use it. I'm going to just cut it across here. Now, this is all just guesstimates, which actually I've not really guesstimated very well there because it's going to be very tall. But that's fine because, you know, coin envelopes come in all different shapes and sizes, don't they? Now, when I make coin envelopes, I normally seem to, and I don't know why this is, but... I seem to often do them, you know, folding them in like to the centre like this. I don't know why I do that. Whether that's how coin envelopes are, I'm not even sure, to be honest. But for some reason, I always seem to fold my sides in to the centre. Um, you know, I yeah, I don't know why. But for some reason, that's just how I tend to do it now then what we want to do is make our little folds at the bottom so I'm going to just 
cut here a couple of corners like that now do we want this side which is rather pretty or do we want the other side I mean to be honest they're both really nice aren't they um, sorry I was just having a glug of my tea there uh, um, I mean to be honest maybe we will have this side with the fold what do we think no it probably is better this side isn't it yeah okay right so what I'm going to do I'm just going to cut my bits here off now I try to round these slightly just so I've got a sort of shaped area here it just makes this you know folding business slightly better because sometimes I end up folding it in and you know cutting it straight across and then I end up with it hooked over so doing it like this I know that I've got you know plenty of room so like that now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my flap and this is where normally we would cut down you know this and tuck it over and that's absolutely fine but sometimes that can be a bit fiddly so I think this is quite a nice alternative to save that kind of fiddly business of trying to get it just right you can take a coordinating paper so in this case we're you know we're using the sheet music so I'm just going to cut this edge off so this is from my um, junk journal basics kit too this um, sheet music type pattern and then I'm just going to take this in here like that okay like that and then I'm just going to cut down on this side like that okay and then what we're going to do we're going to just fold down a little sliver like that and that is going to glue in to our coin envelope like that Oops. now if like me you have cut off <laughs> you know cut it a bit wide then you can always go in and you know either mitre it or just cut it down slightly so I'm just going to kind of yeah just mitre those corners slightly okay and that just tucks in then like that so then what you've got is obviously a really nice coordinating flap so let me just okay my tea's gone so that's one less thing now on the table so you've got then a nice coordinating or contrasting flap. And then what you can do, obviously again, because this is nice and easy because it's a separate piece, fold your piece over, don't squish it because we're not trying to actually get a crease, but you can then just use this then to shape your, you know, your envelope type flap. So like that. And then just, you know, tidy it up like that okay and then that's going to just glue into there like that so I mean I just think they are really 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 nice and to be honest I mean I've probably faffed around quite a bit here but I think they're quite easy in comparison to when you're trying to glue your or cut cut your um you know your envelope flap and all of that business all to shape now hold on first time i've used my glue today so of course now it's playing up and not oh not working come on come on come on right and then i often if i'm gluing down like this i put sort of a line of glue on the inner edge and a line of glue on the outer edge and that way hopefully you're going to make sure that you've 
glued everywhere that needs gluing. Okay, like that. And then here, like that. And just pop that down. Like that. Now, this one, just before I glue it on, I'm just going to ink around the edge. So, just using my vintage photo, ink around the edges like that and across the top. And then I will just ink in here as well, just because it's kind of easier to get to before I've glued the flap on. So, like that. Okay, and then we can just glue this down. Nice run of glue straight down there. I'm just going to kind of like dab it off a bit with my finger. So as I've just got less excess glue and that just pops straight into there. Press it down so it's, you know, snug along the top. And then press that down like that. Okay, and that's all there is to them. And then you've got, you know, really nice roomy, um, you know, coin envelope, and then you've got your pocket. Now, I'm actually looking and thinking, actually, perhaps this is a little bit on the big side. So, yeah, totally, you know, my mistake and pointless because I didn't it up and everything. And yeah, but I then thought, oh, actually, I think that's a bit kind of a bit big, that flat. But there we go. Isn't that just so gorgeous? And of course, then you can do your policy closures. So, you know, because this is a policy envelope. So, of course, the policy envelopes tend to have the, you know, the circles with the brads and what have you. So, let's just take a couple of circles here. Oh, I don't think I've used the same ones. Oh, I've got this brown one, which thinking actually perhaps that's quite nice. Is that just brown on one side and a different colour on the other? I don't know. Yeah, I quite like that contrast in one really actually. Mm, let's check. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I'm not brave enough to do the contrast in one. Yeah, probably not to be honest. Oh. You see, I think, oh, I'm going to be brave and then just chicken out at the last minute. Like, pathetic behaviour. <laughs> just pathetic. No bravery going on whatsoever. Right, let's just see. Okay, so, yes, we've got our circles. And again, you know, up to you, obviously, if you want to ink them or not. Completely your choice. So, oops, like that. Oh, I'm sure I just flicked something on the floor because I heard something drop. Oh, yeah, one of my circles has gone now. Oh, would you believe it? Would you believe it? And the problem is, once it's landed on the floor, the likelihood of ever finding it again, very, very slim. Yeah, it's not a good state on the floor, if I'm truthful. Right, there we go. So, like that. Right, let me bring my brads in and then we're just going to get our pokey tool. Okay, and then just, yep, go through, make our holes for our brads. And then if the um, brads that you're using, like mine, the you know, the legs, what I call the legs, are a little bit on the long side, then of course you can just cut them down. So you know, your scissors should be able to cut them with no problems. Well, I, I say that, I've never had any problems cutting them down, but yeah, can't guarantee. Obviously you're going to have no problems, so like that. And just squish that down, like that. Sorry, I just noticed my hot glue gun wasn't on and I'm going to need that to glue my circles down. So that's that one. And then this one, okay. And again, you know, I just judge by eye for the circle in the middle. 
So like that, like that, okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I just always find the whole, um, you know, cutting around when it's folded in a little bit faffy. I mean, touch with, you know, I feel less intimidated by it now than I did. But certainly when I first started making junk journals, I found things like making coin envelopes very, 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 you know, intimidating, if I'm truthful, because it seemed very, very fiddly to, you know, get my... Um, my top part aligned and you know folded in and things so I just think this is a little bit of a cheats way of doing it and to be honest it also allows you the opportunity of obviously coordinating different papers which I think is kind of a double bonus isn't it now I'm going to put this to one side before I glue these on because my hot glue is just warming up so let's put that to one side and let's make another one so let's just see what other papers I've got here and I'm probably going to be sort of swayed by, you know, the papers that I've got here, really. So, um, I have got some of my William Morris papers, which actually I think it might look quite nice with... Oh, to be honest, they look nice with either the damask or that. So, let's use this one. So, this is the William Morris papers. And then this is my um, damask papers in the pale colour um damask papers and then it's backed onto my header pieces so I actually quite like the damask or I like the header pieces beside that you know I'm not really kind of um favoring one or the other so I'm just going to take my William Morris papers and I'm going to cut down a section off just like we did before just because otherwise they're going to be very very wide coin envelopes so just cut that off and again you know not throwing this away because actually if I now coffee dye the back these are potential envelope flaps or or anything else um you know to use again so yeah definitely definitely not you know not throwing anything away now I'm going to cut this down I'm going to cut it down at the top I think so at the top I don't think it really matters to be honest but yeah I'm going to cut it down at the top now this time oh gosh now I've made it too short so yeah I'm absolutely awful with things like this I've made this one gigantically tall and this one's going to be incredibly short so it doesn't matter it's it's all fine so <laughs> I'm going to just take my sides in and like I say for some reason I always tend to do these with a you know a fold down the center I couldn't really tell you why that is but that's just how I've always done the coin envelopes so again we just squish these in like that now, as you can see, my absolutely shoddy cutting here. So I'm just going to level that off with my scissors. Now it's kind of like folded round. I can just, you know, level that off there. Like that. Okay. And then again, what I'm going to do is just take my corners like that and like that. Okay. And then again, take this giving it a bit of a sort of wide berth you know so you've got then the you know the breathing space for when you fold so like that and then this one like that okay let's get rid of these scraps of paper right so that and that and then we fold this one up like that See, already I've not quite cut this even rounded enough. So, you know, definitely that's kind of a good practice to get into is just cutting that slightly down. It really does help when you are then folding your pieces in. So, like that. Now, let me just check. Okay, so that's looking good, isn't it? Yep. And then just, you know, squish that in. So, either using your bone folder or, you know, in my case, I'm just using my scissor handle. And then I've got my pretty paper here. Now I'm going to take this down here and I'm just going to go in here like that. This is just a quick way that I find to, you know, cut things down is I put it next to the piece that it's going with and then, you know, fold it over and that's giving me a sort of 
you know, measurement without using a ruler because who wants to be using a ruler after all? So like that. Okay, there we go. So that's my envelope flat. Now I'm going to just fold this in here and we're going to have that pretty damask on the underside, so on the inside. Now, can you see here, I've just got this line going across the edge where my printer didn't quite print borderless, so I'm just going to trim that off, you know, because I'm not over keen on the white. And then I can just, again, fold this over like we did with the last one and make my envelope flat. So, you know, no rights or wrongs here. Just, you know, do it sort of how you, how you think looks good. So that looks quite nice, doesn't it? And then again, just going to ink this up. Hopefully I've got some ink left on my blendy tool. Yep. I didn't want to dip it in and end up with it really, really brown. So yeah, luckily there was kind of enough there to just get away with doing it. So like that. Okay. And then just take my ink now and just go around the edge of my potential envelope flap, like that, and then fold this in just across the top like that, okay, and then around here like that. Okay, right, now we will go in here and we'll just this down like that glue our flap down again I always like to have a dry wet wipe on hand for pressing my glue down and I say all these things like repeatedly but the reason why I say them is because you know I'm aware that not everyone has seen my videos before and I know that when I started making junk journals I used to hear people say about using a wipe and you know I would wonder do they mean a, a wet wipe or a dry wet wipe you know is it a special wipe what is it so that's why I kind of repeat myself constantly telling you what I'm doing because I don't want people kind of thinking oh I wonder what what it is she's using it's not anything special it is just a wet wipe and it is just you know dried out left overnight to dry and then just you know keep a bunch kind of like in a in a pouch behind my desk well over the over the way to my desk so yeah so again just squish that in press that down like that aren't they just so gorgeous i mean i just think they're a little bit of a different take on the conventional coin envelopes i love the fact that you know you don't have to mess about with your folds and you know trying to cut your envelope flap this is just much more straightforward way of doing it you know for me personally i find it so again just take my circles i just always keep some ready punched circles ready to use for things like this i think it just makes it you know quick quick and easy to do so i'm going to use these um craft collared ones this because obviously it is brown and I think these you know are going to look quite nice with it so yeah like that I think so again just going to put these together and that's another thing and I know that I have talked about this definitely in a video but when I first started you know making junk journals and I made you know my first few um, uh, coin envelopes you know I did struggle because I then was trying to use, well, I actually was trying to use eyelets. Now, I personally struggle a little bit with my crocodile, so, you know, I'm not the best person with my crocodile. Um, and what I was trying to do, instead of using this two circle method, I was actually trying to, you know, put my circle against my card here. Now, of course, that's near on impossible to do, you know. I mean, it's definitely for me. I'm, I'm not saying other people wouldn't, you know, manage to be able to do that. But personally, for me, that was too, just too much of a struggle. So, subsequently, you know, I dreaded using coin envelopes because they felt like, you know, the world's worst thing to make. 
very, very, very fiddly. What with the trying to get my flap right and then the, you know, the eyelets and trying to squish them into here and things. So, you know, it's all about finding methods that work for you. And so for me personally, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm happy and I'm comfortable now with cutting the envelope flap. So that's fine. Having said that, these are even, you know, even easier to make. Um, and like I say, I do love the fact that the, um, you know, the flap is contrasting or coordinating and, you know, kind of like slightly, you know, you can have slightly different. So that's a really nice addition. But definitely, you know, this shortcut of using the circles instead of, you know, trying to squish your, you know, crocodile down or a tool down to actually sort of like press eyelets in and things. This definitely, definitely, definitely is a massive, massive, massive help. Um, the brads as well, you know, definitely I favour them over the eyelets really for things like this. Um, and, you know, using the two circles just glued onto your piece instead of trying to actually attach, you know, your eyelet into your, you know, your paper in the object itself. Definitely, definitely massive, massive help. So I'm going to glue these on now because my hot glue gun has now hopefully heated up. So, yeah. So, you know, I'm not necessarily saying it's about shortcuts, um, you know, although shortcuts are good. But I'm saying it's about finding the um, methods that work best for you. So not necessarily shortcuts, but definitely, definitely finding, you know, the things that you find um, work for you best. So for me... It's this two circle method and the brads. You know, for you, it may be something completely different. And hey, hey, for you, you maybe don't struggle with your crocodile and making eyelets, um, you know, or using eyelets at all. In which case, then that's great. You know, use your, your crocodile. Sorry, I've just lost the other circle. No, I've still lost the other circle. What have I done with that? It's literally just on there and now it kind of flipped off. I caught sight of it and now it's just disappeared completely. Oh, would you believe it? Honestly, these things happen, don't they? And you're making videos and then it's like, oh my goodness, it's, it's disappeared now on my desk, which really that's as good as just disappearing into the abyss, to be perfectly honest. My daughter would laugh her head off if she heard me say that statement. And it's a bit of a... <laughs> Bit of a silly joke really oh there they are look both of them there so i'll tell you a um bit of a funny story there so when i went on holiday with my sister um this year who knows it could be next year by the time this video goes up because i do film ahead and you know i have no strict upload schedule or anything they kind of go up just slotted around all over the place so um yeah, anyway, we went on holiday and her and I, so we went on a cruise and there was her, me, my daughter and my sister's son. So my daughter and my sister's son, similar ages, you know, and yeah, when they get together, they're just, well, sometimes they're good, but on the whole, they misbehave a lot, I have to say. They just become um, just like unruly. You know, like kind of, they just won't stop laughing and you can't even just get through to them. They're just like being so out of control. I mean, you could just say being a child, but yeah, it's it's pretty horrible to be around, to be honest. Right, I'm just going to try and do one more um, whilst we've got time. So shall we do, oh, I'm just having a look. Let me again just check which um, papers I've got here because that may determine which which papers are going to be best to use. So we could use something like that. That might be quite nice. Um, yeah, anyway, so we were on the cruise and we were sharing a room, you know, a cabin. And um, so we had two single beds. They had, I'm trying to remember what they did have. I think we had a sofa bed and then a pull-out bed above it. 
and then um so one of them slept on the sofa bed one of them slept on the pull-out bed and then my sister and i we had single beds um anyway they were you know close together the the two single beds were close together um you know but there was a gap between them and oh my goodness for some reason my daughter and her son just thought it was so 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 funny to continually and i mean continually fall in the gap between the two beds and of course it was quite a narrow gap you know we were just in a small cabin and um oh they would then get stuck in the gap and then you know they would be laughing uncontrollably you couldn't get through to them couldn't get any sense out of them they were just you know in fits of laughter oh i've fallen into the abyss okay so that was their standing joke for like pretty much the whole holiday the other thing that i've got here actually is i've got this page from my junk journal basics kit which of course i could use any of these papers with really because obviously it's this nice neutrally um uh background so what i might do is do this and then it's a sort of bit of a different look to the other ones that we've done so let's do this right this hasn't been coffee dyed so i'm just going to pull in my coffee which i always keep behind my desk just some black coffee and i just then can quickly coffee dye as i need now i like to use a wet wet wipe with the coffee dye like that so i just quickly go over the back of that i won't even bother coffee dye in the front it's just the underside really that needs doing so and then i'm just going to lay that on my hot glue gun and hopefully that will dry off nicely um whilst i'm assembling the you know constructing this part so anyway yeah they would drop into this space and they would be laughing their heads off and this would go on endlessly so when we would come back for the you know from the day and we'd be you know like i don't know relaxing or whatever you know before we were going to go down for dinner and i say relaxing let's be honest pretty hard to be relaxed because they were being so loud and out of control and ridiculous you know it wasn't relaxing at all because you know you just couldn't concentrate to be honest between their laughter they thought it was hilarious and so in the end it got to the point where you know kind of like you know natalie and i we were just sick and tired of this and so every day it was kind of like seriously like no falling into the abyss when we go back to the room and then that was it just that word just sparked fits of laughter from my daughter and you know natalie's son they found it hilarious and you know needless to say natalie and i did not find it quite so funny although by the end we too were kind of like trying to hold in our laughter because of course that word just became um you know associated with this ridiculous behavior and this ridiculous ah ha, 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 they've fallen into the abyss oh my goodness oh i'm stuck i'm stuck i'm in the abyss i'm in the abyss uh i mean it just was like the standing thing for the whole holiday it was so frustrating <laughs> so that's why i say if my daughter heard me say the word abyss to be perfectly honest, she would be in fits of laughter because, of course, that would just set her off. And then she'd be saying, oh, no, it's fallen into the abyss. And, yeah, it was just horrible. You know when kids just sort of drive you potty with their raucous, really, really, really loud, uncontrollable laughter? Especially when, actually, it's not actually that funny what they're laughing about. But to the point where then it becomes funny because you're just like well losing the will to live really it was like that so yeah anyway i can't use the word abyss now without just thinking of the ridiculous um <laughs> yeah ridiculous situation that we were faced with on holiday so yeah that's all i have memories of i'm just thinking i've not cut this very straight or i've not folded it very straight anyway so yeah i try not to use that word too much in front of her because of course it's going to just spark you know hilarity and not that i mind her obviously 
you know, of course I don't mind her laughing, but it doesn't bring out just hilarity, it brings out like ridiculous, ridiculous behaviour. So yes, if I can refrain from using the word abyss in front of her, then I do. But oh my goodness. It was kind of like the theme for the whole holiday, you know. I mean, yeah, it's several months now since we've been as I filmed this video and who knows, like I say, I don't, you know, I don't know how my videos get uploaded because they just kind of get slotted in here and there um, around other things. And um, yeah, so I mean, it could even be a year by the time this goes up. But well, I'm sure that probably forever we will have this whole falling into the abyss memory of that holiday and it will just have you know this connection with falling into the abyss probably for the rest of our whole lives you know my life Natalie's life and theirs oh I mean who knows when they get bigger maybe they will be very embarrassed although to be honest something tells me they probably won't be <laughs> so yeah oh dear Anyway, it was, um, yeah, frustrating to say the least. But they obviously thought it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And, um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? How what kids find hilarious, you as adults find just, oh, my goodness, awful. After a while, you're like, I cannot listen to this anymore. It was like that. Right, now I'm just thinking I've kind of gone over slightly. So I'm just, just pressing this over slightly more okay right there we go take that down there oh it's such a grey drab day today oh I mean it's pretty chilly I've got my little fan heater going and um yeah not not a good day it's really miserable out there I'm just wondering, I might cut this bottom piece off and have it this way round. Shall I? I want it. No, yeah, I do want that big flower, I think, at the bottom. So, okay. And then just, yeah, fold my top part over. Like that. Okay. Let me just tuck into here. That. Okay, looking, oh, looking wonky. I was going to say looking good. No, it's looking wonky. So, yeah, not looking good at all. In fact, just looking completely skew -if. So, yeah, not very good. Don't know really what I did there. But, yeah, did not make a very good job of that. Right, now, just going to, again, fold this kind of in to do my corner rounding you know and you could get a bit creative with your envelope flap shape you know you don't have to kind of like leave it like I'm leaving mine which is you know pretty basic you could you know play around and kind of like come up with some other shapes you know just have fun and sort of see what you like best or what looks what looks best so like that Okay, right, I just need to quickly trim this down slightly more because it's not looking too good. Right, okay. And then here I've just got this little bit that's kind of a bit longer, so I'm just going to trim that down there. There we go. Right, now, just before I glue this in, I'm going to just ink around just because, again, it's just easier to get to. There are a lot of justs in that sentence, weren't there? I don't know quite why, why I had so many justs in there, but that's just how it goes okay right yeah it's very dark outside so I've got my light on which I have taken to just filming with the light on generally actually because I think perhaps the light in you know it's better with the light on so I mean you know I don't really film at night or anything like that so it shouldn't ever be too too dark but Obviously, even on a sort of rainy day and things, it can have a bit of a dark appearance. So I think the light is pretty helpful. There we go. 
and that's my envelope like that so you know they're really nice aren't they let's just quickly do the policy closures now do we want the craft color card or do we want the creamy color when i say cream it's it's really it's coffee dyed although they might not all be coffee dyed i'm just thinking oh, i don't know what's going on with that one i've got a two-tone and i'm going to throw that away because i won't ever use that no, I think I do quite like the, um, the craft colour, actually. They're sort of quite nice for a change, aren't they? And, you know, yeah, just sort of makes it stand out a little bit more. So, again, just put those together. I'm going to try and be really efficient and do all four circles at once. So if I end up with a really misaligned hole, it's going to go through all four, which, you know, not quite such a good idea, perhaps. But there we go. Right, first two. Oh my goodness. Get my brad. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, come on. Oh. Okay, right. Let's just snip those legs off again from the brads. I don't know why I always call them legs, but. To me, they're kind of um, reminiscent of legs. That one, and then one more. Okay. <clears throat> like that. Oh, come on. Right. Through there, and then just, yep, snip this down. So, here we go. One... And two, oops, like that. Again, squish those down, like that. And then, yeah, we can glue these on. So I'm just going to, again, just squish this down with my scissors. Well, not squish it, but, you know, hold it down with the scissors. And then that one. And this one. Okay. Aren't they just gorgeous? I mean, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you think this is an easier way to make them, you know, by having the sort of flap as a separate sheet of paper? I definitely think it's it's quite a nice way to make them. You know, it seems like it's very, you know, very easy way to make them. So let's find some baker's twine and just pop that on to finish these off. Uh, okay, I'm just having a look to see what colours I've got. Right. Got pink. I could do with some more baker's twine actually. Uh, and this is brown. So what I might do is just not coffee dye it, but go along this with my um, vintage photo distress ink. So well, it's distress oxide, but you know, using it in the same way. So yeah, this baker's twine it takes to the um, being inked pretty well so and then I think it's just going to match my piece a little bit better so and then what you do is obviously separate out your circles and then you can just wrap that round and knot it so I tend to knot just one way oops like that make sure it's threading into the circle like you know in between in between the circles like that oops come on come on like that oh my goodness come on sorry come on oh my gosh fiddly fiddly sometimes what happens is when i glue it I end up gluing the circles um, together. So that could have been what happened there. And then I just knot it the other way as well. And that, you know, just secures it then a little bit better. So like that. And then obviously you can cut out the end, struggling end like that. Okay, and then take your twine and of course then wrap it round like that aren't they just so lovely i really do love them 
So that's that one with the brown. And then let's just see for the other two. In the pink. Now, shall we try and ink the pink? Oh, this one, actually, I'm thinking the brown again. So let's do the brown again for this one. Yeah, I'm going to um, buy some more baker's twine, I think. So obviously I have got lots of pink, but yeah, just running slightly down on my other colours. It's one of those things, you don't really use it that much, perhaps, but definitely, you know, it's something that you do need, I think. Or, you know, not necessarily do need, but, you know, definitely it's handy if you're making junk journals, because I think there are things that baker's twine up you know very useful for these being one of those things so again separating out the two circles tie that round okay one like that and then this one like that okay Again, just snip that out there to trim it and then just yeah go around your circles I mean it's a little bit fiddly the first time that you wrap it around because your circles might be you know squished down quite tightly together with your brad and you know if you're anything like me like I say you might have even glued it together but once you've done it once, they're nice and easy to get to. So that's that one. And then the final one. Let's just pop that away. So this one, I'm going to just ink the pink. Ink the pink. So it's a little bit grunged up and vintage as well. So, and you know, you don't have to kind of like ink it all the way round. Just by inking like one side of it, if you see what I mean, is enough to give it the illusion of being inked everywhere, I think. So, just quickly pop out my table. From that distress ink. Right, okay, so, take my pink, separate my circles out again. Right, oops. Oh, this one's quite tight. There we go. Okay, right, so going round, tie that through there, come on, come on, like that, oh gosh, come on, ah. come on, right, that one, and then this one here, just tie that one round like that. Oh, come on. Okay, and then just, yep, snip that off. Like there. And then just, oops, round here. Again, you know, just get yourself started through your circles. And then, you know, you can either do the figure eight for your closure. Or, you know, you can go straight straight up or down or straight up and down or you know however you however you fancy so there we go and do you see that you know that just inking the baker's twine slightly it's just made it look a little bit vintage and kind of like ties it in nicely so yeah that's my um slightly different take on coin envelopes and a little bit of a twist um you know on coin envelopes with hopefully some useful tips of um, making them and yeah how to kind of make them a little bit easier hope that you like them and um, yeah thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video have fun then thanks bye